Hey everyone! So today I would love to share some maps with you that I recently got in my post box. They came together with this beautiful card from Katie who initially wanted to send them a couple months ago. In fact, she did send them, but the package took a little odyssey before it got here. It somehow went back to the States once. And we don't really know why that happened. So I was really happy when it finally arrived and there are so many maps. So we have many, many different topics ahead of us. And I would love to start with these vintage maps that she sent me. They're from New Hampshire, Katie State. I thought they were interesting and wanted to share them. A view of my home. Really, really like this. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and number eight. Some pictorial scenes, a scene through the eye of a camera. And we can see here the White Mountains in New Hampshire. The old man of the mountain is a symbol of New Hampshire. We still use it on all state documents, even though it collapsed many years ago. We just can't let it go. So you can see here in the rocks what it looks like. A face looking at some shade over his eyes and then a prominent nose. There's also Jacob's Ladder, the Mount Washington Club Railway leading up the mountain. And that looks quite adventurous, frankly. But let's start with some of the older ones. Oh, in fact, let's start with this one. With a vacation guide from 1973, and you can see that they really are quite fond of the old man of the mountains. an overview with the recreational facilities. There's the National Forest and Mount Washington is up here along the Presidential Range. There's an elevation of 6,288 feet, I assume. There's also the Appalachian Mountain Club right here. Wildcat Mount Gondolas. Right here, there's an old road that goes up to Mount Washington. We're going to see this one again in some of the brochures. There's a highway cutting through east to west, right here. And another one past the Corvo 
Fort Knox State Park A little further north to Santa's village right here And it tells you that here you get to the Connecticut Lakes There's the Connecticut River And here's the old man There's an aerial tramway Some polar caves And then here we have some lakes Where I'm sure you can go camping as well Approximate minutes of driving time to attractions depending on where you are and where you wish to go and for all the different places tells you the address what's spectacular about it like the Alpine view there's no waiting for 25 minute round trip or Unlimited stay, permitted at mountaintop, self-guided nature trail at base, cafeteria, gift shop. It's open daily. It tells you the admission for adults who was two dollars fifty. Children six through twelve was one fifty and under six it was free. The season was from May 26th to October 22nd and it gives you a telephone number in this case And there are also banks, campgrounds, motels, radio stations, restaurants, etc. You really needed that kind of guide before the internet. It's sometimes difficult to imagine how I would have planned a vacation, even though I'm old enough to remember it. Then here's the Flume Reservation, Franconia Notch Lost River. From the Society for Protection of New Hampshire Forests And I really like this little map that they have here At the front This one's a bit older, you can tell by the black and white photo at the back In fact, I think it's said here somewhere mm. Tells you all about the membership, the dining and lunch room and lodgings. Alright, here it says booklet copyright 1941. So this really is an old publication. But look at this, doesn't this look gorgeous? This little path here along the water Rushing across the stones I really really like trails like that Gives you some information on the area, again we have the old man And the text says, it is said that this most notable scenic feature of New Hampshire 
was not seen by white men until the summer of 1805, when two men were surveying for a proposed north road from Peeling, now North Woodstock, to Franconia. While washing their hands in the cool waters of what is now known as Profile Lake, they looked upward over the green forest and gazed upon this remarkable stone semblance of the human face formed by the ledges and the upper cliffs of Profile Mountain, 1,200 feet above the sparkling water of the mountain tarn. They exclaimed, that is Jefferson, he then being president. I don't think this would be written in that style anymore today. And of course, it's always a little noticeable that back in the 40s they only mentioned the white people turning up in the area. You actually did have an Algonquin population that lived here for thousands of years. That well, doesn't turn up in the 1940s publication. I think that's not surprising necessarily. We then have the aerial tramway here. Round trip fares for adults, 95 cents for children, 75. It's a lost river, a nature garden, and a nature camp. And the membership in the society is just one dollar per year or twenty five dollars for life. I guess that was a bargain, at least it sounds like it. And the society is a non profit organization supported by membership dues and contributions. Alright, but I actually wanted to have a look at this little map here in the front because I think it just looks really cute. So there's the old man. Yes, the Cannon Mount Aerial Tramway. If you can see here, there's a little skier. We have Echo Lake fishing. Some tiny little waves here. There's an echo. Oh, wow. We have a black bear standing in the grass. Here's an old railway site. You can see the rails. Here's a tired businessman resting. The Paradise Falls. A beaver lake. A scientist. A bird. I'm not sure what the scientist is doing, pouring some water on the tail feathers. Here we have some singing bluebirds. The nature gardens and caverns. And the different peaks listed here. This is really lovely, but very small. This one also looks quite old. But there's no date given. And 
it asks, have you been up? Big question mark. Here in the White Mountains. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I think that. A little kid peeking out, and that looks like the station where you start. And do you think these are the parked cars? All oh, very small down in the valley. There's the Cannon Rock, after which the mountain was named, and then Observation Tower at the summit of it. Here a tramway guide points out majestic Mount Lafayette for a group on Cannon Mountain Rim Trail. And the aerial passenger tramway, this one here, was the first of its kind to be erected to the summit of a mountain on the North American continent. So that's quite impressive. The visitors are whisked through the air at the rate of a thousand feet a minute to the mountain station near the top of Cannon Mountain. The drum cars, which are suspended from steel cables hung on three massive steel towers, accommodate 27 passengers. And there's a continuous ride over over a mile with a vertical ascent of over 2,000 feet in less than eight minutes. But it's all perfectly safe. So there's the Mount Washington Auto Road, and I kind of love this photo here with the clouds hanging there in the background, and that old car. It looks like out of a film noir, don't you think? And here's the train on the famous Jacob's Ladder. There's also a ski mobile in summer operation. That looks pretty interesting. It's here, it's unique. I don't think I've seen something like that. It carries 600 passengers per hour in individual, constantly traveling cars, either to the top for sightseers and expert skiers, or to one of the several intermediate stations for amateurs. So it looks like skiing was quite popular. So much snow. This is for intermediate, expert, and novice skiers. You can get lunch. You can go for a slalom. And I have to say, I love this photo right here. Like with that hat. That guy could be Austrian. Honestly, this could be somewhere in the Alps here. I love it. I 
actually have to admit that I've only been skiing once in my life when I was a kid. I don't like the thought of it, but it's quite an expensive sport. really popular photo <laughs> of the old man. Yes, the Lost River, a charming wilderness area which should not be missed. As enchanting as their names are the giant pothole pictured above. The Hall of Ships, the Elysian Land, the Lemon Squeezer, Cave of Silence, Paradise Falls, where Lost River emerges from underground, and Nature Garden. Admission is 30 cents, including federal defense tax. And you can see here this long line of people. I'm guessing down the mountains and they're skiing but it's hard to tell, they could also be climbers queuing to get up and then there's a little map of the skiing centers and the ski trail Pretty fascinating, I think. And it's kind of neat to compare it to this publication here from 65. Or for when it gives us a year. Let's see, how does this one open? This is really nice paper. I noticed this on some of the other sort of newer maps here too. It's a little structured. And we have a map of all of New Hampshire here. I have to admit I don't remember which states it borders, but I do remember that this part is coast. Well, maybe a bit further up if there's a Dover. But I think here's Maine, maybe a bit further. Canada isn't far. And then here you get to Boston and New York and Albany. And you have a lot of European names here. There's a Hanover, a Manchester, Portsmouth and Dover and Lancaster. There's Berlin. And again, like before, we have a lot of information on the different areas where you can stay and who to contact, either by telephone or here is a post box. I don't 
also plenty of sources for additional information if you want to go fishing or hunting and you need to apply for some licenses if you have a motorboat and you want to register it etc can a camping guide from 73 for all the different areas of New Hampshire These two is where I thought that the paper is just really lovely. And there we have Jacob's Ladder again. The steepest grade, 37%. That is quite steep. So here's, I guess, the Sounds like the old photo we've seen, but it now has modern coaches. Do you know, I briefly thought there are so many underground lines that still use coaches from the 70s, including here in Vienna. I would probably really think, oh yeah, that's, that's a modern one. Even though it's a couple decades old by now. can see it going up here, the panorama of the presidential range. It was the first mountain climbing railway in the world, opened in 1869 and has been in continuous operation, except for one year during the First World War and three years during the last war. right here and interesting to see in the 70s the adult round trip fare was already $7.50 for children under 12 $4 and children under 6 free if held on parents lap when the train is crowded so not occupying a seat and patrons are advised to take the early morning trains to ensure no waiting. So I guess it was pretty popular if they added that bit of information. Here we have another picture of the route to the cloud. A lot less film noir in color, especially with that bright blue. The highest peak in northeastern United States. And if you do not care to drive your own car, They'll take you up there. There's the panorama station on the top. Okay, 
hear some people enjoying the view on the side of the road. It says here that Mount Washington was first climbed in 1642 by Darby Field, an early New England settler. Legends tells us that the Indians never made the ascent because they believed this mountain to be the driver dwelling place of their gods. Today the summit is visited annually by many thousands of tourists and hikers from all over the world. It's a bit of a cruel transition here. Alright, and there's the White Mountains. tells us that the White Mountains occupy an area of more than 3,200 square miles in the northern half of New Hampshire, the greater part of them being in the White Mountain National Forest. Throughout this region there are scores of mountain peaks, 86 of them with definite names. The Franconia Notre Scene and Paradise Falls. The Echo Lake, a bright mountain lake, 1800 feet above the sea, under the purple ledges of Eagle Cliff. Jacob's Ladder here. A mysterious hanging boulder at the polar caves near Plymouth. It's another one of these faces, this one called the Indian Head. And Jackson Falls. There's a covered bridge here in Mount Liberty in Franconia Notch. These are really pretty, I really like this. Here's the Judgment Hall of Pluto and the Hall of Ships. Beautiful mountain lake. Futuristic on this depiction. And there's sunrise above the clouds.
Again, here with these old cars. Mm -hmm. I find that really fascinating. Interesting view into the past. I hope you enjoyed this little peek. I certainly did. Thank you for joining me. I hope I'll see you again next week. And until then, sweet dreams. Good night.